We have 21 450 watt end type panels ready to bring back that we have just collected from SVP or SPV Energy. And Ray, absolute gentleman, um, was good enough to do a bit of a deal with me. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for solar install up in this part of the country, give them a shout. They are the lads, they know their stuff. And once again, of course, Horig is right here with me, their star employee. And uh, yeah, so thanks a million to SPV Energy for hooking us up with all this gear. So let's get back down the road now and we'll get it on the house. So it's time to do some upgrades to our off-grid power system. And the first stage in that is replacing our older P-type solar panels with the newer, larger, more efficient N-type. So what we've got is 21 455 watt N-type Jinko panels. And thanks to SPV Solar up in Kingscourt County Cavan, they even threw in four 300 watt end types completely free as part of the deal. And of course, we also have our mystery box that we're going to open up a little later on. The main difference between P-type and N-type panels is both in their construction and their efficiency. The older P-type panels, the silicon wafer is doped in boron as part of the construction process, but the newer N-type are doped in phosphorus instead. And also, they don't suffer the light intensity degradation that the P-type suffer over time, which can degrade the efficiency of the cell. What we've got here is 10.7 kilowatts worth of solar. And after long discussion, Claude and I figured out how we're going to incorporate this into our system and make it scalable for the future as well. All of our P-type panels will be replaced and we'll have four separate strings of panels. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that leads to a problem. On our current inverter, we only have two PV fittings. So if you've seen the Two Homes project, you'll know that they have four PV fittings on their twin parallel inverter setup. That's what we have to go for in the future. So for the moment, we're just going to lay the groundwork, have all the panels down. But operationally, we can only use two of those strings at the moment. First thing I have to do is disconnect and remove all these old panels. First part of this job is having to lift the tiles to fit the roof brackets and also cut out the, the slot in that tile to accommodate the bracket underneath it without hitting the tile underneath it. I swore after that last time I'd never be doing this again but unfortunately here we are. And if you're doing this you want to make sure that your brackets aren't hitting off the tiles because if they're vibrating you know if the panels vibrate in the wind or anything like that could crack a tile. We do want to try to avoid that at all costs. Like that. Sure it's lining up straight. The interlocking tiles are probably one of the easiest ones to work with. Remove all our various wedges. There we go. Now, two down, six more to go. secure now and as you can see behind me it's almost dark it's quitting time for today so first thing in the morning we'll get back out and get the panels on Okay, so second morning, we're ready to put panels on. What we've done is we've set up um, a second ladder here with a hook and a, a rope on it so we can just slide the panels up the ladder and I can get them at the top then and bring them over to the rails. It's not that they're overly heavy. They're 26 kilos each. It's just that they're big and awkward to, to maneuver around um, being just one person doing it. So yeah, we're gonna get cracking and get them up on the roof.
You're stuck on the edge. Oh, and no. Hey, sweetie, can you put your leg on there? Okay, no, Daddy got it. Leg on what? No, it's okay, I got it. Oh, there you are. Go on, Michael. Come on, Daddy. You're going to be scratched and shite, but it works. You're not too bad, though. Do you know what I'm thinking? No, I don't want to know. I feel like Dougal Maguire on the milk van. I don't want to be a solar installer anymore. <laughs> I tell you one thing, getting them up that ladder is the hairiest part. But it seems to be going okay for that one. So once I get these tacked down then, I'll make sure that it's lined up straight. panels up and I'm putting them together as one string on the inverter because we're kind of nearing the max of one of the PV inputs which is five and a half kilowatts and um, so we'll have a string of ten and another string of four okay you take that end you got it yeah come on now started on wiring up the new consumer unit here for all of the DC circuit breakers um, we're going for four different strings um, so because the roof is going to be eventually 9.1 kilowatts we're going to have two circuit breakers each one a thousand volts at 32 amps and then for the existing ground mount and the ground mount that's going to be built in the next stage of the project um, we've got two 500 volt 32 amp circuit breakers so red for ground green for the roof and also very important to remember guys if you're building these yourself there is a difference between dc and ac circuit breakers so make sure you're getting the right one for the application you've got if you'd have asked me four years ago i would have never said i'd see myself wiring up a consumer unit in four years time and it was quite sad really to hear of the uh, the untimely passing of robert murray smith rob was a huge inspiration to me in the early days of our off-grid stuff you know with the the DIY wind turbine and all of our early solar stuff and uh, it's it's deeply sad to hear of his loss you know um, we wouldn't be where we are today doing this if it wasn't for the inspiration and the effect that he had on me and all of his videos on tinkering and tinkering and indeed his own uh, main channel Robert Murray Smith so I suppose um, from us here at the homestead you know our sincerest condolences to his family and friends because uh, he had a huge effect on so many people and again a huge inspiration on so many um, but yeah you know right so it's all wired up and seems how you helped with cables and all the rest and um, you want to switch it on and see what they're doing red or green green, green. any of them um, the first green is pv1 second green is pv2 okay Wait a minute. Or can I turn yeah, the other one on? Okay, so 539, 594. Yeah. It's going to slowly let it increase when it realises how much is there. It just lets it feed in slowly. Okay, so that's the group of 10 panels, that's 608. And the group of 4 panels that we have to add more later to is only 242. So it's dull, grey, cloudy. No sun. I think the sun is somewhere up over there at the minute, but. It's total grey out, kind of misty. I would have wished it was a bit sunny, but um, so look, we'll have to wait for that. Now, with all that bit out of the way, I think it's time to open up the mystery box.
Let's see what's inside. Lola, move it. Thank you. Oh. Here's a clue. Big DC cables. Heavy wall bracket. Let's cut to the chase. There it is. These Powerbox G2s are just about the best high capacity, low voltage battery package. It's an all-in-one that you can get on the market today. It's compatible with just about every other brand of technology out there. And when it comes to scalability, you can add up to 40 of these together, which is much more than most other brands are capable of doing with their own types of batteries. One, two, and oh. three. Okay. You can do it, happy though. One, two, three. I'm gonna pull up my trousers. <laughs> you yeah. know. One, two, and three. Okay, here we go. 96 kilos. So, as you think, you're great, don't you? Nope, I don't. <laughs> Are you on it? There we go. That was handy. For you. So, we just leave them keep charging from the solar as much as possible, and then when they're all at 100%, then we link them together through the canvas. Sure, how are you meant to get that to 100% then when you're not plugging it in? What? Obviously I'm going to plug it in. Okay, but like why are I'm you... I'm just not going to plug in the communication cables. Oh. So they won't be acting as one bank. This oh. will just be sitting here charging on its own until it's ready. Wait, what? The power cables. Just from there? Like, <laughs> like what the <laughs> fuck do you think it is? Wi-Fi? <laughs> I'll charge you with the power of no, the force. But like these are all like cables. Like what you're putting in the I'm cables. I'm going to connect the DC cables. To where? The bus bars. Okay. I'm just not going to connect the CAN bus communication okay. where they would be working as a team okay. until they're all at the same level. Okay. And all hundred percent charged and then they'll all be working from the same place. So I'm you, going to you connect the to, DC cables, right? You need to explain yourself <laughs> better. That's what you need to do. Okay. Because okay. you're talking and it's, it's like you might think it makes sense, but it's not making sense for the ordinary folk, okay? <coughs> if you've been following us for a while, you might notice another little addition in here, which is these boxes to house the bus bars. Um, these are just common junction boxes. I got them over in Murphy Brothers in Port Law for the grand price of nine euros each. The one added beauty of the bus bar enclosures is that they prevent any operator error. So it prevents someone going at this with something like a spanner here and accidentally crossing between the positive and the negative bus bar. But they are completely safe to handle because it's low voltage DC. Another tip for you guys, if you're doing your own systems at home and you're wiring things up, make sure you keep your AC conductors and your DC conductors in separate conduit. What can happen is you can get cross inductance between the AC and the DC cables, which will interfere with the signal on one or the other. Now it's usually from the AC to the DC, but it can go both ways, depending on what level of power is flowing through those wires. So like you see on the wire, uh, excuse me, on the wall behind me here, one conduit for the 63 amp 240 volt AC going into the house, and another conduit for the high voltage DC, which is around 360, but only at, I think, 18 amps. That comes down from the solar panels on the roof and they're well separated from each other all the way inside so there can be no cross inductance another piece of important information is fire safety should your house ever go on fire for whatever reason might be nothing to do with any of the power system when the fire service arrives they need to be able to switch the power off now at the standard mains here in ireland in the uk they can do that at your meter box and they know what they're doing there but when it comes to these off-grid systems there is a bit of a question mark over it, particularly as it was mentioned by the mainstream media in a recent article. So when it comes to fire safety, these systems have multiple switch offs, okay? There's the main 63 amp breaker that switches off the power going into the house, okay? There's also the changeover switch inside the house, which has an off position as well as just the mains or the off grid. And if the fire service can't access any of those, that's why we use the socket on the wall because it's the third level of safety to disconnect electronic power from that building. Fireman comes along and he just unplugs the socket 
now the building is safe for them to spray water on and do whatever they got to do. So the second stage in this project that we'll be handling in the next video is going to be upgrades to the rotating ground mount. We're going to put the four 300 watt used panels onto that and fit an electronic actuator so we can turn it by remote control. Um, the bigger bit though is building a whole new ground mount right here on the slope. That's the south facing slope at about 40 degrees. So if we build a tilting ground mount, it can sit flat all day long. And then in the mornings, we can tilt it over to catch the early morning sun, which is directly behind where the camera is there. We're gonna put the five Jinko panels onto that, um, bringing it up to, I think it's about 1.8 kilowatts or 2.2 kilowatts, something like that. So I hope you'll join me for that. Once those next two stages are done, that'll bring our solar PV up to about 12.575 kilowatts, which is more than twice what we used to have. And then of course we can add the wind turbine back in for another one and a half kilowatts. But as you can see at the moment guys, as well as no sun, there's also no wind. So with the system back up and running again for the moment, it's time to switch back to the off grid and fire up that generator. So listen guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. Do take care of yourselves out there and I'll see you in the next one.